we're going to make a point today about this old gold. It's gotten to the point where I'm finishing this and what we're going to discuss today is how to do these belts, the drive belt. I see a lot of these for sale even alongside the road rotting and the most common thing is that belt is busted or it's uh, slipping and it is a real knuckle buster. But uh, let me make the point that there's nothing like these engines and these old mowers. These are built like a tank. I mean, this is literally like a battle tank. You could hit anything with it or drive over anything with it, and it doesn't even phase it. doesn't even hurt it, unlike the newer ones. But we're going to discuss the belts. If you can see that without my big body shadow in the way there, I'm getting as wide as I am tall. This belt is around the steering column. That means this has to come off and the steering linkage. And then you can unbolt this, slip it down, and the pulley has to get unbolted here. Okay. Which also means the rest of the body has to come off in the back. And the fuel tank to be able to route it down there around that big old pulley. Because that critter's going to gag you all the time. And so is this mechanism right here. If you don't free this up where this spring is, okay, and this doesn't pivot and this doesn't lock in right, your deck's not going to work right. And nine chances out of ten, as old as these mowers have gotten, this is always seized up. Every one I've gotten a hold of, except for maybe one or two, uh, including this one. The deck is all seized up. This was in Hurricane Sandy down the uh, shore. That's why she's so rusty. But the guy had a brand new motor put in it and a brand new rear end. That's why that rear end's like new in this one, too. Uh, that's uh, that's not a 25-year-old, 30-year-old rear end. That was replaced. Uh, but the salt is what this is, is traces of the salt water. So this motor is, uh, the mower itself is worth resurrecting because the, even the flood really didn't destroy it uh, outside of the body and cosmetics. But in order to do these and get that uh, point across to you, that if you're going to restore one of these, because I would, I would highly encourage if you have one of these rotten away in the yard, uh, most of the parts are still available, and if not, you could probably find a good parts mower for sale on Craigslist, uh, the marketplace. We put a lot of money into it. They still don't have all like the deck shield back on and all that. Uh, that will go back on later. But I put another battery in it so it cranks over. Put a new air filter. Uh, a lot of a lot of work went into this one, and I don't give them away because this one has a snow plow sitting out there on my table, and I've redone most of the stuff except the plow itself, and that's next. And I'm not going to give it away. It's a $900 mower. They sold for $2,000 new back in the day, almost three. And I will tell you something: these are a world-class machine compared to the new stuff with plastic this and plastic that. The only plastic parts on this are this thing, and that breaks all the time, the steering wheel, that, and the gas tank. Other than that, there's not another plastic part on it. It's all steel. And that's why I told you, you could run it into a brick wall, and it'll still keep on driving. Less the damage that was done to the hood like that was done on this one. The sun glare here is horrible. But I refinished the hood. She looks good for what she is. For 30-some years old, there's uh, people, their teeth are falling out, and their hair, and... Uh, they're on crutches and canes at 30 years old. Uh, even I'm crippled up, but I'm not that bad. And that's maybe why I feel sorry for this stuff. My uh, 170, I found him uh, wheels up in a dumpster last Christmas. And uh, he's celebrating his first Christmas in the barn over there, which is uh, can be expected. I'm not really working it to death except to haul firewood. And i got to put chains on it. And there's the body for that one. And then I have all the other parts, hood and body, for this one ready to go. Uh, but this, mower, this motor's got to come out because here's another thing. These axles seize up. So when you're doing the belts and you have to take everything all apart, and to make it lighter, I pull the wheels and a lot of parts off of them so I can get it up myself and get the board underneath it to do my operation. This axle is seized solid. So we have another axle off the donor mower, which uh, it looks like the crows got it. I think the vultures were here. 
only I was the vulture that ate it. And uh, almost every other part except for the rear end was junk. Uh, even some of that linkage is going to get saved and salvaged because it's just not going to be available in the future. And for those of you that have one of these, okay, it's not, uncom it's not uncommon for a, motor, a mower to go 50, 70 years and still be operational. Uh, I don't know what, you know, the next guy is going to do to it that owns it, but I know my 170 is still going strong. The tires, a lot of times you're going to find these wheels are seized on those axles and they have to be cut off. That's a stroke of tough luck. And even these wheels uh, that belong on these 160s, the 170s, 175s, these wheels are drying up. There's a few rare models, which is the reason why I kept mine. It's an even more rare model. It's because my wheels are a bolt-on with a bolt-on hub. These are not. These were semi-commercial mowers. Uh, mine was definitely a commercial model because it actually has the stickers on it. But if you guys ever want to see tricks and stuff and you really want to get down and buckle down to business oh and the reason why that hood doesn't close is I got my stuff in the way there the knobs and stuff because the body's getting ready to go back on today but don't discard one of these mowers okay they're uh, they're not going to make anything like it in the future it's all plastic junk uh, even deer really deer really did itself a number uh, with some of the stuff that they've built and that engine right there that puts out more torque and more power than a 22 horsepower Briggs twin. That's only a 12 horsepower in these. And I'll tell you what, I'll, they'll they'll out pull, they'll out mow, they'll out do anything the new Briggs motors that are out there will do. Those Kawasaki engines in them they go forever. So do yourself a favor and have a look at that. It's a sad picture that that thing's all rotten and not, it hasn't been taken care of, and it still ran. It it ran beautiful. That's the thing is it just looked like hell. And I guess the guy finally got his insurance check after he got it going. And he decided, well, I'm just going to let it look like hell. Well, that's a real crime. And it it uh, kind of hurts me a little bit to see him, you know, wheels up in a dumpster or sitting alongside the road or rotting outside somebody's house. And they really have no value of what they really have. Uh, I don't know. And everybody's calling me for parts for some of these new ones. And... Some of the parts, like those plastic rear ends, uh, one-piece rear ends that, in the Deers, the, the Scrub Cadets, and the other junk, I don't even want to deal with them. They're junk. You need another rear end. They want 900 to 1,200 dollars for a rear. So, you guys appreciate what you have. That those rears and the, these things are they're a beast. You know that's and it's a true transaxle. By the way, that rear end is called a transaxle because the transmission is in the axle. So a lot of people actually don't know what the designation is. And these were made by uh, Frontier, which was a part of American uh, rear and axle at one time. Uh, I, I actually researched it, and it, it comes back to a company called Frontier. Now, maybe you guys out there that have more information than I do can tell me more about the rear ends, because I know very little about them. But thanks for watching my video. And if you've got one of these uh, in your garage or whatever, uh, and your other one's giving you headaches, you better better start putting this one back together. It's uh, kind of difficult. you got to disassemble everything to get to those belts. Uh, the decks on these can be real hairy, hairy scary with these pins in there. There's pins if you can see them down in there. So you really got to remove the body, the seat, uh, fuel tank. You really got to get a lot of stuff out of your way uh, to overhaul them. But once you overhaul them, they stay running again for another 20 years. So it's your money, it's your mower, it's your life. You decide what you want to do. I'm going to put them back together. And that one.